I want to, uh, uh, tonight, I want to talk about something, not necessarily off topic from what we've been discussing uh, last night and, and even this afternoon, this evening with Charles, but something just, I guess, closely related to it. And friends, I believe it's very important that we understand uh, how important our feelings or our reaction to certain things really are. I want you to consider, first of all, just a simple definition. Sometimes it's good to start off with a, with a definition of, of words that, that maybe we don't uh, uh, know about or, or uh, uh, have heard. Maybe we hear we don't really, sometimes people use uh, uh, words that, um, that we don't uh, understand. Sometimes the words are confused. Sympathy, empathy, apathy. But apathy is defined as a lack of interest or concern, especially regarding matters of general importance or appeal. It's indifference. Or it's a lack of emotion or feeling, impassiveness. And what concerns me, uh, dear friends, is the fact that there seems to be some apathy, a lot of apathy, about social issues, social, uh, social issues. A lady called in, right? Uh, I, think she, I, think, uh, I believe she was the last caller uh, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, discussion they had with Charles. And she said, you know, everybody ought to be concerned about moral Issues. It ought to be something we're all concerned about. That's exactly right. But the danger is, and the problem that I'm seeing, the problem that it, I think we'd all see if we look around, is apathy. There seems to be a general lack of interest or lack of concern on uh, general matters or matters of importance, especially when it comes to our society. Friends, apathy is dangerous. Apathy, the idea of not caring, is something that can get us in, into, into deep trouble. You... Uh, you may recall that when Hitler in Nazi Germany, and I forget the I forget the uh, uh, the man's name who was working with Hitler, but he wrote that one of the reasons why Nazi Germany got to do what they did as far as the extermination of the Jews was not because. Uh, People were opposing them, but because there were people who were indifferent, who sat back and did nothing and gave no opposition. And so we, we realize the danger, or we should realize the danger of saying and doing nothing, sitting idly by, or sitting back and and saying or and doing nothing. And so, friends, the, the, the danger is really there in... Um, and uh, 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 being apathetic. Now, I really wonder if people are apathetic. I wonder if it's the case that maybe they're not uh, uh, apathetic. Maybe they're not uh, uh, indifferent. Maybe they want to think of uh, uh, things they can do. Maybe they want to be more uh, involved in civic matters, civic importance. But I wonder. I just I don't know. I, I really don't know if people don't really care about what happens in our society. Or maybe it's just that they're ignorant. And that just seems uninformed. It does, it's not, that's not a bad word. There's no shame in being ignorant. Uh, and so they may be apathetic, a lack of interest, because they don't know. They're not informed. Or it may just be that they are indifferent, that they just don't care. As one man said, are you ignorant or apathetic? And he said, I don't know and I don't care. He was both. But friends, we need to know, we need to be concerned about about uh, social issues, we need to be concerned about things that are, that are important because they are the things that, that uh, dictate our lives. They, they have the greatest effect on our lives. And so uh, this is what we need to realize. We need to be uh, unapathetic. We need to be more sympathetic. We need to be, be uh, more involved in things concerning our society. I want to play you a clip. And this is a, a, just a, a group of individuals who are talking about uh, the movie, uh, Brokeback Mountain, and I said this, this uh, program tonight is not necessarily on that, but it is it's, it's dealing with that subject matter. It's not necessarily dealing with the movie, but it's dealing with the subject matter, I, I suppose, and how people feel about things like this. Now listen to what these people say as they, uh, and you know what, I don't have any audio. I can use my, uh, my microphone. Listen to what they say about uh, the, the movie. Shit on everybody else. That's one of the things. It's not happening. 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 It's not happening.
All right. So, so basically, a a, a consensus of of apathy. You know, I don't care. If I, I you know, it's in your bedroom, whatever you can do, what you want to. Friends, to me, that is that is apathy. That is apathy. Indifference about this. Now, you may be saying, well, James. Uh, that's no big deal for you. I mean, you can uh, you can say we're apathetic and you can talk bad about us whatever you want to, but but uh, that's just the way we feel. Well, friends, I still say that's apathy. That's apathy. That's that's apathetic. That's being apathetic about the about the matter. And here's why, friends, because when we don't take concern in the well-being of our society, then basically what we do is we say that we don't care about other individuals we, we don't care about the other people in our society and I, I didn't I didn't have the uh, uh, the call but a gentleman called in last night and he said well you know uh, and I'm paraphrasing so I hope I don't uh, mis misquote him or, or mis uh, quote him too badly I think I can paraphrase what he said but he said my children are out of, out of, out of the house and uh, but when they were in the house I set down rules for them well that's good and but here's the thing my children are not out of the house and so I would hope that you wouldn't be apathetic about what happens in society just because your children are, are now out of your house, see? Because my children are out of my house, and so and they have to grow up in the society that you and I both live in. And so it's not just the parent's responsibility to change society for the child. It's everybody's responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility to, to do uh, uh, what they can to make sure that the society is best for not just their children, but for also all the children that uh, that are, are uh, raised up. So, I want you to consider that um, uh, what was what was uh, uh, done in Second uh, Kings chapter seven. In Second Kings chapter seven. There was a, 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 the city was under siege, Samaria was under siege, and there, some lepers were outside. They are, the lepers were cast outside the city, and the Syrians were gathered around, and they had the, the city under siege. And so the Lord uh, had sent the Syrian army on flight. They heard noises and they took off, and these lepers were out in the, uh, outside the city, and they stumbled upon the Assyrians. Uh, and uh, said, you know, said, we're going to go to the Assyrians, and if they kill us, then they kill us. But if not, you know, maybe they'll take us in and we can live. Because they certainly weren't going to get any food in the, in the, in the city of Samaria because they were under siege. So they go to the Syrian army, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm paraphrasing here. But when they got there, I want to uh, begin reading in verse 7. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight. This is 2 Kings 7:7. 7, 7. They arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. That's, that's the Syrians. Uh, and when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the port of the city, and they told him, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied, asses tied, and tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told the king, uh, the king's house went in. So uh, bottom line is, the, the people in, the, in, the, in Samaria, they realized, hey, we can go out and we can spoil the camp of the Syrians. And that's what they did. But these lepers realized, you know what, we need to be saying something. For the benefit of everybody else, we need to be saying something. Now, they had good tidings, but it was tidings that would bring life. It was tidings that would bring a better quality of life to their, uh, to their uh, uh, fellow citizens inside the city walls. Now, friends, I am going to suggest to you that up until that time, they decided to go and tell about the, the Syrians being fled, they were apathetic. But they started being energetic and they started speaking what they knew would help those people inside the walls. Now, friends, I'm, I'm suggesting to you, I'm urging you, I'm pleading with you to realize we don't need to be apathetic. We need to be uh, 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 informed. We need to be aggressive. We need to be taking action about things that we know can benefit society and not just say, well, it doesn't matter to me. I want to inform you so that by the end of this lesson, you won't be ignorant of some things 
And again, just uninformed, I want to inform you about some things so that you can make an educated decision about if this is good or bad for our society. I want you to consider them as some of these things. I know we're not apathetic. I know we're not apathetic about some things. But yet people seem to talk about, when we talk about homosexuality, people say, well, so what? People are going to do it anyway. Remember the apathy. Do what you want to do. Keep it to yourself, don't hurt me, whatever. And you're wasting your time protesting, you're wasting your time talking about it. Go on about your business. Well, friends, is that really the case? You know, are we apathetic when it comes to hunger? Let me just ask you. Are we apathetic when it comes to po poverty in the world? You know, Jesus said in, in Matthew 26, 11, For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. The poor are always going to be here. But yet, do you think we're ever going to stamp out poverty? Seeing as Jesus said, the poor are going to be with us always. No, we're not going to stand by poverty. There's always going to be some needy in the world. There's always going to be the poor. There's always going to be the hunger stricken. But yet we have uh, 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 things like the children's, the Christian Children's Fund. You know, 80 cents a day. You know, the man walks around, he shows you all the, the slums and, the, and the, the filthy water and the, uh, the terrible living conditions. And, and, we, and we, we have a tug on the heartstrings and we say, you know what, we're going to send money and, and help these people out. That's the plea, that's the idea, because these people need help. Well, is that, if I contribute to that, is that really going to stamp out poverty? Is it going to be the case that poverty will no longer be anywhere in the world? I want you to consider some statistics on, on uh, undernourishment. Our poverty. This is, a, this is a graphic from the United Nations webpage, and basically the whole world population, 16% of the world's population is undernourished. And right here in the, in the central part of Africa, these dark, dark red uh, 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 spots, these dark red countries, is actually representing, uh, according to this, the, the, the legend here, 35% of the population is undernourished. And so you can see the, the lighter they go, the, the better nourishment you get. And, but friends, notice this. 16% of the world's population is undernourished. Do you think we're ever going to put a dent in that? Do you think that there's, that there's going to come a day when all the countries of the world are going to look as lush and green as the United States and Canada or uh, South America or uh, Australia? Excuse me. Is there ever going to come a day that there's not going to be any poverty in the world? Well, especially since Christ said, the, the poor you have with me always, you, with you always, I don't think we're ever going to do it. We're never going to feed all of the hungry of the world, no matter how hard we try. But notice this. Even after Jesus said, the poor you have with you always, look what he turns around and says. He says and teaches this. He says what you need to do. He told the rich young ruler, he says, you lack one thing, sell all thy house and distribute to the poor that thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Now, why would he tell this, this young man to distribute to the poor if there's always going to be poor? I mean, uh, eventually, this young man's going to run out of money if he sold all that he had. Eventually, he was not, he was not going to be able to provide for everybody, was he? See, but Jesus tells him, you need to give to the poor. And listen to what Paul says in Ephesians 4 and verse 28. He says, let him that stole steal no more. Why, Paul? But rather let him labor. What's the purpose of working, Paul? Working with your hands. The thing which is good. What's that good thing, Paul? That he may have to give to him that needeth. Do you mean that if we all work and we all give, that somebody's, that eventually everybody's going to have what they need? Or are we still going to have the poor always with us? Is there always going to be poverty in the, in the world? Is it the case that there's always going to be someone in need? Look what Paul says about th those who have the, this world's goods. In 1 Timothy 6, 18, he says, That they do good, that they be rich in good works. These are these that are, are, are rich, charged in the rich in this world, to be not high-minded and trust in uncertain riches. But that they do good, that they uh, be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, ready to distribute, rich in good works. If you have the, this world's wealth, you need to be giving. You need to be generous. Why? I thought the poor were going to always have with us. That's the case. But even though there's always going to be some poor, even though there's always going to be somebody in need, even though there's always going to be someone who is destitute, no matter how much you give, the need is still to give so that some of those individuals might be relieved from the pain and anguish and the destitution that they're going through. So that some of those individuals would not have to suffer like the rest of the world. Yes, the poor you have with you always. And so my point is, 
even though we are faced with a hopeless cause of never feeding all the poor, never feeding all the hungry, never clothing all the, uh, the destitute, even though that is an uphill battle that we'll never see accomplished to say every person in the world has enough food in their belly, are clothed with, with clothes, good clothes on their back, and have a roof over their head, uh, even though we'll never see the day when everybody has what they need, we still strive to meet that need. We still strive to make sure those people have it. Why? Because we're trying to alleviate some of those individuals from that pain. Yes. But why don't we throw up our hands and say, well, who cares? You know, you, you're, never gonna, you're never going to save them all anyway. See, we don't have the same apathy about feeding the poor or feeding the hungry, clothing the poor, as we do about a social issue like homosexuality, and I'm saying, why? See, we're not apathetic about this, even though we know, we recognize that it's never going to see an end to it. It's never going to put an end to it. But yet, yet we have apathy about other things. Oh, look at this. What about hurricanes? Natural disasters. Have we ever stopped a natural disaster? A na have you ever seen anybody stop a tornado? i tell you what, if you knew somebody could stop a tornado, I know that there's a lot of people in Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas that would love to know who you are who could stop a tornado because they are very, very destructive forces of nature. But yet, people don't approach them with apathy. People don't uh, approach these natural disasters, hurricanes and what have you, with, with uh, uh, apathy about, well, who cares, so what, uh, indifferent. No, what do they do? They start boarding up windows. They start bolting down the hatches, right, when a tornado comes. They start tying everything down. They start getting into their cellars and their, uh, their storm cellars whenever the tornado is coming. Why? Because there is a need. You mean to tell me that we can board up windows and we can uh, uh, stop the doors and, and things like this and we can uh, tie down everything that, uh, that's loose and we'll save some of it? No. But look at this. When people prepare, uh, when people prepare for them, does it save anything? Does it save everything? Now, I'm sure some of it is saved. But why go through the trouble? Why not just be apathetic about a tornado or a hurricane? Why not just be apathetic about natural disasters? You know, why not just be apathetic about these mudslides and, and earthquakes that, that happen? Why not just be apathetic about the tsunamis? Why not just be apathetic about the hurricanes? See? I mean, look, look what happens. This is Hurricane Andrew, 1992. We know about Katrina, the devastation of Katrina. But what about Hurricane Andrew, 1992? It obliterated 102 miles of power lines and 300 towers. So what? Big deal. Who cares, right? 8% of all Florida agriculture is destroyed. 300 square miles of total devastation. 300 square miles, my friends. That is a lot of real estate. That's destroyed. Directly after Andrew, 1.3 million people without electricity. So what? Do we have apathy about this? Do we say, oh, so what? Do we say, well, you know, it's going to hit, it's going to come, might as well just forget it. Or do we prepare? You see? Knowing that this is going to happen, why do people go out and get generators? Why don't they buy up all the generators and all the batteries and, and prepare for the, for the long, long wait of getting their electricity restored? 90% of all small businesses were destroyed. Now you tell your small business owner, so what? So what's destroyed? You know, they'll say, are you nuts? This is my livelihood. Don't you dare be apathetic about something that's destroying my livelihood. One billion dollars damage in Louisiana. Twenty-five billion dollars damage in Florida. Homestead, uh, uh, Florida, had lost 80% of its homes. One of the, one of the towns, I, I, I want to, it wasn't Gulfport. I don't believe, uh, from Katrina, was just wiped off the map. There were towns in, in Mississippi that were just gone. Why didn't we see the apathy about that? Why didn't we see the apathy about uh, 63,000 homes badly damaged in these storms? See, no one approaches these storms with apathy. They say, you know what? We, we're in danger, but we're going to do something that will prepare ourselves in hopes that we, we can salvage something. I don't know why people are, are so concerned about FEMA and the Red Cross responding to Hurricane Katrina. I mean, I thought, I thought if it was something that you can't change, right? 
I mean, people say, well, people are going to engage in homosexuality. You can't change it. Well, who cares? They do their own thing. Well, you know what? You have more. You have more. Uh, uh, you have a more hope of of changing someone's attitude about homosexuality than you will stopping a hurricane, Category Five hurricane. But you don't approach that with apathy. You don't approach that with so what? Who cares? Oh no, FEMA didn't get there fast enough. Red Cross didn't get in there fast enough. They didn't have their supplies. They weren't organized. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. Who cares? See. We get irate. We get mad when people have apathy about things like this. Things that they could not stop. Things that they could not change. We, we have passion about. But we have apathy about things that we can make a difference on. Things that we can change. Things that we can do differently. See? Why do we even send people? Why do they go? Here's why. So we can prepare those individuals? So those individuals can know what's coming? I mean, why did the National Weather uh, Service just say, well, you know what, we've got a Category 5 uh, hurricane coming in. It looks like it's going to hit uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. But you know what? Th there's nothing those people can do to, st to stop it. So, you know, we're not going to tell them. No. That would be gross negligence to do that. Because those people have a right to prepare themselves, to save themselves, and even some belongings to get out of town. See? We don't have apathy about things that we can't change in nature. Comes to hurricanes. No, we don't do that. But we seem to have apathy about homosexuality. Social issues, moral issues, we seem to have apathy about it. I want you to notice this. What about health care? Look at this. Will, will every disease known to man be, be eradicated? Will it be the case that we will, will eradicate, that we will stamp out every disease that's known to man? Have we found a cure for cancer? No. Have we found a cure for AIDS? No. Have we found a cure for polio? Yes. But you know what? After 50 years with a vaccine for polio, do you realize there are still cases of polio? Even after we've had the cure for 50 years? See? There are, there are a great number of, of cases, children with polio, in, in West Africa because they have not been vaccinated. Now, do we have apathy about this? I mean, look at these, look at these children. They're, they're all distorted. They're all bent. Their body's twisted because of a sickness, a disease. Do we have apathy about that? Do we say, well... You know, kids are kids. They're going to be, you know, they're going to either grow up and be strong and healthy or they're not, you know, survival of the fittest. Who cares? No, we don't have apathy about that. Even though, even though we may not be able to save them all, we still try. We still try, don't we? When a baby is born, brought into this world, you know, we vaccinate them. You know, give them shots. We put stuff on their eyes. You know, I, I remember when my, when my two daughters were born, you know, they put that eye salve on them and they just, they doctored them and shot them and squeezed them and whatever. They, got, they took care of them. Why? Because they're concerned about the health. But you know what? Why don't we just a apathetic about it? Why don't we just approach it with some apathy? Why don't we just approach these issues with the same apathy that we approach other moral, uh, moral issues? Not other moral issues, but moral issues. Why don't we approach these things that we're not going to be able to change everything about it with the same apathy as we pr approach other issues, see, that we may not be able to change everything about it? You know, tonight as we were uh, discussing, you know, Charles said, well, you're not consistent, you're not consistent. Well, you know what? Our whole society's not consistent. Our whole society says, oh, so what? So what about moral issues? But, oh, you know, you better get down there and take care of those hurricane victims. Oh, so what about social issues? Let you sleep with whoever you want to sleep with. You do whatever you want to do. It's none of your business. But you know what? If you dare don't vaccinate those kids, you're a scoundrel. You know? Oh, you can do what you want to do, drink what you want to drink, do, uh, do whatever you want to go, wherever you want to go. It's freedom, freedom, say what you want to say. You know, who cares what people do? 
But I tell you what, you know, you 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 start you start being apathetic about some uh, some issue that you cannot change about hunger. You know, how dare you turn the the channel when that child, Christian Children's Fund comes on asking you for money? You're so apathetic about that. See what I'm talking about, friend? We're talking about issues that we can make a difference in. No, we may not be able to change everything about it. You know? Yes, it's true that there's always going to be wickedness in the world. Certainly it's the case that God's people are going to be in the minority. I mean, Jesus said in Matthew 7, you know, 13 and 14, Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life everlasting, and few there be that find it. Now, do you think, given the idea that, that there's only going to be a few people who make it to heaven in, in, in comparison to all the world, that we shouldn't go teach the gospel? Why was it that Jesus gave the Great Commission in Matthew 28? 1920, go ye therefore and teach all nations, you know, go into all the world. Why was it that he tells people to go and preach the gospel if he knows that there's only going to be a few that will obey the gospel? The same reason why we, stri we, we strive to stamp out hunger even though we know it's an uphill battle. Same reason we warn people about hurricanes and natural disasters, even though we know we cannot stop these disasters, and even though we know that there's still going to be destruction and devastation that follows in the path of them, because there is a need for people to know so that they can take precaution measures, so that they can change and do whatever they can to save themselves. Same reason why we don't approach health issues that, that we have... Uh, uh, we're nowhere close to curing diseases. Same reason why we keep looking for a cure for AIDS. Same reason why they're still a cure, looking for a cure for, uh, for cancer. Same reason why people are still looking for cures because we don't want to be apathetic and we know that at least we might can save some. At least we might can make a difference. At least we might can make a change in some person's life. Maybe just one, but at least we have tried. And at least we can say, I did not sit back and say, well, they're going to do it anyway. So what? We're going to do it anyway. Such apathy. Such apathy about the, about the society that we live in. And so, friends, this is, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about apathy. And you say, well, well, why are you making a big issue about homosexuality? Well, you know what? Because I want, I want people to be prevented. I want some prevention on this issue. I want, I want our society to know the facts and to be aware of it so that we can prevent our society from going downhill so that we can keep our society as good as possible. We say, well, people are going to do it. You know, they're going to find a way to watch it. They're going to find a way to engage in it. Yeah, they will. But if we can change the hearts of, of in those individuals, change the minds of those individuals, get them informed, maybe, just maybe, you know, they will decide, you know what, I don't want to go down that road. I'm informed about it. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about those dangers. I, I know that apathy is strong. I know that people don't want to say and do something. That's why, that's why the guy called in and said, well, uh, uh, you know, James, you're going to be the only one on this. Well, that's fine with me. Maybe I'm the only one that's not apathetic. Maybe I'm the only one that's, that's, that's not sitting back going, well, I don't care, you know. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, everybody's going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things they've done in their body, whether they be good or bad. And the very next verse he says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Paul was not apathetic because he knew what was coming for everybody. And friends, I don't want to be apathetic about issues that, that, that uh, endanger our society, that will affect our society. And, you know, someone says, well, you know what, you don't harp about this and that and other. You know what? You know, it would be nice if I, had, if I was omnipotent and omnipresent where I could be everywhere all the time and talk about every issue. And, you know, and maybe I don't pick up an issue and talk about it like I should over here, or maybe I drop the ball over here, but friends... You know, why condemn someone for not being apathetic when most of the people out there are going, oh, so what? We can't make a difference. 
You know, that's the devil's lie saying you can't make a difference. That's the devil's lie saying, well, you can't stop it. You might as well let it go. What if Jesus had that same attitude? Lord, you're the only one. You're the only one that can save the, that can save the world. And here you've given your message to, to 12 men? And, and, and you hope to save the world with this message? It ain't never going to work. Well, it won't. But I'm glad Jesus wasn't apathetic. I'm glad he wasn't indifferent. I'm glad that he didn't sit back and say, well, you, you know, you're right. And most people are going to be lost anyway. So, you know, big deal. You know, we'll let them all go. Friends, that's, that's apathy. That's apathy. And I just, I just don't see why, as a society, we want to be apathetic. But they were apathetic in Christ's day. He says, By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. They were apathetic about Christ's message. See? Because, it, it's, well, it's not going to help us. I want, you to consider the, I want you to consider these two conditions. And maybe, just perhaps, just perhaps, I can, I can get rid of some apathy from some individual, some, some uh, honest-hearted, honest-thinking individual who maybe for whatever reason says we shouldn't worry about it. I want you to consider these two conditions. On the, on the one hand, on the one hand, I want you to notice the, these conditions. A decreased likelihood of successful marriage. If you have this condition, someone's involved has this condition, that they will have a decreased likelihood of a successful marriage. If they have this condition, they have a five to ten year decrease in life expectancy. Chronic hepatitis and, and uh, other fatal diseases of the, of, the, of the liver. Fatal esophageal cancer. You know, this condition brings these things about. Pneumonia. Internal bleeding. Severe, me, severe mental disabilities. Some of them even being irreversible. Persons with this condition have a higher incidence of suicide. Persons in this condition have a very low likelihood of eliminating the, uh, 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 the effects of this condition without eliminating the condition itself. In other words, if, unless you eliminate the condition, you won't get rid of the symptoms. Very low likelihood. And individuals with this condition have only a 30% likelihood of elimination through extensive, costly treatment. Individuals who, who endeavor to treat this condition and eliminate it are 30% likely to succeed. Among, successful, uh, among uh, uh, carefully selected and highly motivated individuals, there's, there's a very, very high percentage of success. But only among individuals who are very, very highly motivated to, be, to, to succeed can they get rid of this condition. Now, compare on, on, the, on the right hand. I don't know if that's, that's my right and your left. Consider on the this, on this side here. Consider the, the similarities of this condition. A decreased likelihood in successful marriage. 25 to 30 year decrease in life expectancy, chronic hepatitis, hepatitis, fatal immune disease association with cancers, frequent rectal cancer, multiple bowel and infectious diseases as a result of this condition, a higher incidence of suicide for persons who have this condition, very low likelihood of effects eliminated without eliminating condition itself. You're not going to get rid of these things unless you get rid of the condition, in other words. But there is a 50% likelihood of elimination of this, of this um, condition through extensive treatment, costly treatment. But there's a 50% likelihood and near 100% likelihood of success, elimination, among carefully selected and highly motivated individuals. 
you carefully choose individuals who de are determined we're going to check we're going to get rid of this condition th they're successful now what are the two conditions what are the two conditions alcoholism and homosexuality you say well what do you mean james you, you're saying you're saying alcoholism is a condition i can understand it but homosexuality is a condition yeah it's a condition it's a condition it's not that much different from alcoholism they're 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 uh, both behavioral, compulsive addictions. They're both brought on by individuals engaging in something and then realizing that that addiction or that practice has got its uh, grasp on them. But you know what? There's a lot of people who are, who are uh, uh, alcoholics and the way their loved ones look at them and the, because of the hurt and pain and anguish that, that is brought upon as a result of alcoholism, you know, everybody says, you know what, you, you really need some help. They really need some help. They need to get rid of this condition. You know, we really make a difference. We need to, we need to get you some help. You know, let's check into Betty Ford. You know, let's, let's, let's go to AA meetings, whatever. You, let's, let's get some help. But with homosexuality, which is a compulsive, addictive behavior, see, very, very similar conditions we're told to say, well, as long as you're happy. See, and so we start producing apathy. Where up, up here, we, have, we, have, we don't have apathy. See, we have sympathy, and we, we want to do something. But down here, we, we look at it like, well, you know, as long as that makes you happy. Not considering, not considering the conditions that this person, this loved one, bring upon themselves. Now, friends, I'm just saying, you know, we just can't not be ap apathetic about these things. We have to be informed. We can't stand to be indifferent and say, well, I don't care. I don't care. You know, I, I, want, I, 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 I don't really care if, if people do it or whatever. It doesn't affect me. It does affect you, friends. It does affect you. Just like alcoholism affects our society, so does homosexuality. I don't know why people think that there's no difference. See, we legislate alcohol use because of its dangers. We recognize that alcohol is a drug and individuals who are, are, are uh, imbibing and partaking of it, that, that they uh, harm society. They harm society. Notice this, in 2001, a 2001 uh, survey shows 25 million, that's one in every 10 Americans surveyed reported driving under the influence of alcohol. Nearly 3 million more than the previous year. It's on the increase. Among young adults ages 18 to 25 years, almost 23% drove under the influence of alcohol. And we, we have laws on the books to prohibit this. See? You drink and drive, you lose your license. You drink and drive and you kill someone. You know, that's, that's horrible consequences. You are not supposed to drink. You know, we have a, a legal drinking age to keep people, to legislate uh, uh, individuals, legislate morals, if you will, to keep people from being involved in things like this because it's harmful to society. It's harmful to society. It's dangerous. None of you out there wants to be on the road with a drunk driver. I just don't, I just don't believe that anybody out there wants to, wants to be driving and meet a drunk driver coming in the other lane. Never know what's going to happen. I don't like to be behind them. I've been behind them on the road. They're swerving all the place, you know. I fall way back. You get, you get on around as fast as you can. Why? Because it's a danger to you. And we recognize how dangerous it is, you know. But given the dangers of homosexuality, some statistics we looked at last, uh, last night, given the dangers of homosexuality, individuals engaged in, in, in homosexual practices, uh, 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 it's associated with sexually transmitted diseases, HIV, AIDS, liver and infectious diseases, bowel disorders, mental health problems, and suicide. We're not going to be concerned about individuals involved in that. You see? You mean to tell me that we're just going to be apathetic about individuals who are engaged in this kind of practice? You see, it's not, it's not gay bashing. It's trying to inform individuals about the dangers of this lifestyle. See, why is it that individuals in a monogamous heterosexual relationship don't exhibit these the uh, these uh, conditions to the to the great degree? I know there's some out there, but.
predominantly is associated with the homosexual lifestyle. Now, they have some protection, whatever. They say, well, use protection. But you know what? Condoms aren't effective against most sexually transmitted diseases. Oftentimes, they're not even used. See? So here's, here's what we're talking about. We're talking about a social danger. We're talking about a, a, a condition, a problem that affects society. And most people are going, uh, you know, don't, it don't affect me. It doesn't. You think it doesn't affect you? Let me tell you something. When someone gets sick, it affects me. Because they go file their insurance, and my insurance rates go up. Just like anybody out here drunk driving, you know, they have all these car accidents, drunk driver hits you, you know what? Pretty soon, the insurance rates start creeping up. See, the more, the more people who are involved in accidents, it affects us all. You know, it's just, it's just like when the, when the producer of a product, if he has an increase in cost, guess what he does? He passes it on to the consumer. It's the, it's the ripple effect. Individuals who engage in a promiscuous lifestyle affect you and me. See? It's been estimated that 30% of all 20-year-old males with a, a same-sex sexual behavior will be HIV positive or dead by their 30th birthday. You don't think that's important? We're concerned about children dying in third world countries because they don't have dirty water, but we're not concerned about 20-year-olds with, with uh, same-sex sexual uh, behaviors. We're not concerned about them being dead by their 30th birthday. Can we be so calloused? Are we really so apathetic? You see, this is what I'm talking about. Dear friends, you know, everybody gets mad because, oh, you're gay bashing. I'm not gay bashing. You know, if we were talking about, if we were talking about the avian flu, oh, we need to go get a vaccine. We need to watch out. Don't pet any birds. Don't kiss any chickens, whatever. But we're talking about people who are dying because they're engaged in sexual, promiscuous sexual behaviors. And we say, well, they're going to do it anyway. You know, we'll just pass our condom to school and say, have fun. Are we really so apathetic? Are we really so calloused? Deadly consequences of this behavior? And we seem like we don't care. People say, well, you're going to do it anyway. Do what you want to do. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. You know? You got, you got, you know, people saying, well, you know, not that it's wrong, not that it's bad. You know, I just don't prefer to do it or not. Well, you know what? It is bad. I don't prefer to do it either. Why? Because it's harmful. It's dangerous. But yet we have apathy about it. And, that, and that's what we're talking about, dear friends. We're talking about something that is affecting our society. Why are we so apathetic? Why are we so indifferent? You know, I want you to consider this. You really think, you really think that it doesn't matter? Well, let's just talk about pedophilia for a minute. Because right next door to the homosexual with two consenting adults doing whatever they want to do in their own bedroom, right next door to that is the pedophile. And if you're going to say, well, that's, you know, you know freedom to do whatever, are you going to say the freedom to, to do whatever with a child? And where are you going to draw the line? The man-boy love association, you know, well, you know, we, 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 you know, we think that's good, wholesome love. Not with my child, it's not. And you don't think this kind of behavior affects you? Well, my kids aren't in the house anymore. Well, mine are, you know? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to raise them up and I'm going to send them out into the world full of people like this? You know, you can't even let your child go to the, to the bathroom in the mall by himself, themselves because they're afraid they're going to get abducted and, be, and, and uh, molested? Oh, but it doesn't affect our society, you know. They're just, they're, you know. yeah, you just kid yourself about that, friends. Someone says, well, you know what? Uh, there's more incidence of child molestation among heterosexuals. All right, that's, that's true. That's a true fact. Because there are more heterosexuals. Hello? Heterosexual males outnumber homosexual males 36 to 1. And heterosexual child molestations outnumber homosexual child cases 11 to 1. 
But notice this. The implication is pedophilia is three times more common among homosexuals. Now, there may not be as many of them, but they're engaged in pedophilia more. See? Do you care? Do you really care? Are you still apathetic? See? I just cannot believe that when it comes to a social issue like this, people would have the, the audacity, the gall, to say, well, free country, we do what we want to do. Well, let them do it with your child. Let them do it with your child. I just, I, just, I just don't understand this, people. How can we be so apathetic? Is it really ignorance? Did you really just not know this? If that's the case, then I hope, I hope that you're really considering this. I hope that you're really thinking about it, the consequences. See? You can't just sit passively by and say, well, it's, it's just a personal choice. Friends, you know, again, we are more apathetic uh, about this than we are about things like the avian flu or the spotted owl out in California who's going to lose his habitat, you know, because the loggers are coming in and cutting down all the trees, you know. Oh, there was a, 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 a spotted field mouse somewhere out in the, in the field, and so we have to, you know, call out Greenpeace and make sure that the... Uh, uh, that the um, uh, mouse is protected in their habitat. You know, we, we have all kinds of save the whales, but we don't have any kind of uh, uh, gumption to save our own fellow man and save our own society from something that is causing so much damage that has not been spoken about. We're apathetic about this. Oh, we're passionate about, you know, saving the whales, but we're apathetic about other things. We're apathetic about other things. Now, friends, you know, that, and, that's, and that's why I'm talking about this movie. Because it, it's representative of something that is a danger to our society. And so, I, you know, I, want you to, I just want you to consider that. I hope that you're informed. I hope that you consider that. I'll take that call if that's for me. If that's for, for me. We got five minutes here. Is, is, that, is that me on line three? Okay. Uh, so you know we, we've got we got a few phone calls. We got a time for a few phone calls if if you want to let them in. I know I've, I've I've talked a lot this hour, friends, and normally we like to let the phone lines open up. But I have some information here that I hope you realize is important. I hope that you are sitting back and saying, you know what? There's some things I didn't know. Maybe I didn't recognize that. I hadn't thought about homosexuality in that light. Friends, it's not gay bashing. It's not, it's not tearing down someone's alternative lifestyle. Yeah, you have the freedom to do it. You have the freedom to do that, but you know what? You have the freedom to do a lot of things, but that doesn't mean you should. See? And so, and we're, so we're talking about some things that will affect our society, and I hope that we're, we're passionate about that. These call for me? You're on the word from the Lord. Yes, James, I'm proud to say you're my brother. Well, thank you, Jody. And I'm proud to see that there's at least one preacher in town who will stand up to something like this. Well, you know, I, I just I, I just recall uh, you know, and I don't know I don't know what he says in the, in front of the pulpit, but you know, I, I recall that uh, seeing um uh, Mr. Jackie Poe, you know, he was down at the council meeting or whatever when they were talking about this, you know, the firing range that there was going to be started out there by, by his church. Yeah. You know, yeah, let's take up arms about that, but when it comes to this, let's be apathetic about it. Yeah. You know, let's just kind of sweep it under the rug. Don't well, you've really it. opened my eyes to a whole lot more than I knew. Well, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's information. That's the power of knowing, is it not? Well, Knowledge I'm proud of you. Well, thanks for your call. Okay. You're on, what is, you're on a word from the Lord. Hello. 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 Yeah. Um, I was wanting to talk to James. Yeah, you're on air. Okay. Um, are you doing the right thing? I, I'm hearing something else, though. Am I, am I talking to you? Yeah, 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 you're on air. 
Oh, okay, because I don't see your mouth moving or nothing like that. So it's like something else. Am I on a different show or? No, you're on. You're on a word. It says what does the Bible say on, on the thing there, but. Okay. Well, I think James is doing the right thing. Yeah, this is me. You're talking to me. You're talking to me. Oh, okay. Well, um, maybe I'm on a different channel. I don't see your mouth moving, but hear somebody else talking. But anyways. Oh, oh, you know what? I bet you're on channel three. Channel three? What channel? Okay. I'm on I might channel 18. Think you're talking to somebody else on another phone. So, but anyways, you're doing the right thing. When you was on earlier with Charles, I was listening to you, you know, against Charles, mm -hmm. who bringing it to uh, Hollywood. Right. And uh, earlier this morning, the woman was talking about bringing it to um, Hollywood, and uh, I called her and I told her, you know, um, it, you know, I didn't think anything about it until I seen you. That you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Long, you know, I'm not gonna go because I don't believe in it. So you know, let people go that believe in all that, you know, and stuff like that. But then I heard you, and I'm, I changed my mind. It shouldn't come here because, and she was talking about, you know, if there's a lot of protest outside. Um, do you believe there would be a fight? And I said, yeah, it would be a fight out there. Um, I, I think I heard you. I think I heard you. I remember somebody saying that. Uh, yeah. So you were talking to Jessica. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, but uh, you changed my mind on that. Well, I, um, I, but uh, I don't think it should come, you know, because uh, what the guy was just saying earlier, you know, he don't care where it comes or not. And you think what your religion is and, he don't care what you think about his religion. Right. All of us should be against this movie coming in here. Right. Not just one of us. All of us should be. Good. That's right. You know, and, and really what we're talking about uh, is, you know, we're, we're talking about do we really care about people when it gets right down to it? You know, if you saw somebody, if you saw somebody in danger, you know, would you try to save them? You know, and, and this is what I'm talking about. Someone says, well, you're not going to change Someone who's engaged in a homosexual lifestyle, you're not going to change their mind. You know what? I may not change their mind, but I may change somebody's. Exactly. You know, I may motivate a mama or daddy to say something to their child about it. You see? If I've done something and motivated somebody, then I have, I have actually done some good. You know, right. and and that's and that's really what we're talking about. You you think I'm ever, if you think we're ever gonna stamp out uh, homosexuality? No. I mean, as a guy called in yesterday, Charles, he said, "Man, there's been homosexuals even from Bible times." That's right. Oh there's yeah. Been perversions fr from from the time when man started being perverted. But you know what? That doesn't mean that we have to just let it go. Exactly. You know, and so uh, I just don't understand this I, I attitude of you know, no big deal, do what they want to do. So. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you now. I'm, I listened like to her earlier. Then I listened to you and Charles. Now I'm listening to you again. And and you're right. If all of us, everybody, even the guys that are saying, "Oh, I'm a Christian," and but I'm gonna let it say, "Let's let it go through." We should not do that. Everybody should stand up. I mean, everybody. That guy is not a Christian if he's gonna say, "Well, we'll just let it go through." Jesus, he Jesus. everybody to stand up and tell. We don't need this in our, you know. That's right. We don't need it in our county. We need to get it out of our county and get away. That's just like, say, terrorism, 9-11. Right. You know, um, where, say, we can say they come over here, you know, like they did and, and um, have plane, um, mm -hmm. you know, where they had the plane license and everything. Right. And that's just like, you know, oh, well, you know, just let them come in here and, you know, fly planes, you know. They ain't doing us no harm. Right. But they actually are. Yeah, yeah. They didn't hurt me when they flew in that tower, but they hurt they hurt my fellow man, and that, that hurt me ultimately. You know, it hurt our economy. It, you know? Exactly. So, and so it, it, it does, do it, you know, it's the ripple effect there. Exactly. And so, I, you know, I just, I just don't see that people who are, uh, saying they're Christians, I don't see them acting the way Jesus did if they sit idly by and do nothing. Jesus said, you're either for me or against me. Right. And um, so anyway, well... My mind from this uh, morning. You believe that? I'm sorry? I said, you changed my mind completely well, from this morning till now. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I think, I think what you said earlier, I think you were watching me on channel 3. Watching it. And now, I'm on I channel 18. Channel. Yeah. So, but nonetheless, I, I really appreciate that call.